Hey, this is Michael Lindsay. I'm out of Castillo Ranch today at the 2020 Kawasaki KX250 launch. The bike behind me may visually look a lot like the past couple years, but there's actually quite a few changes inside. Uh, if you want to learn all the tech nitty and gritty, hit the link below. I did a full tech brief on the bike, but I'm going to give you the quick version here. The engine has a new bore and stroke. We're up to a larger bore, shorter stroke. We have bigger intake and exhaust valves finger follower designs, more valve control, more aggressive cam profile, and just a lot of things to try to expand the power range of this bike. The 2019 model was really good, low to mid range, very raspy, very connected feeling bike, but it did not pull very well up top. And it was a bike you had to shift a ton and you felt like you were kind of short shifting in the mid range to get the best of it. This bike definitely has a lot more spread. It pulls way higher in the RPM range without going flat. Now, admittedly, the gain of power is across a much wider range, but there is maybe a tap bit of loss of initial torque. There's a few corners, uh, say like a middle length rut on last year's bike that I would hit in third gear, where I'm back down to probably second on this bike. But last year's bike, I wouldn't run that corner in second because it would rev out so quick on exit, I would immediately have to short shift. Well, on this bike, I'm carrying through second on that same corner and able to carry second all the way up to the next obstacle and then shift after I take off. The overall gear spread is pretty interesting. Like I said, the gears are way more usable, but they've made second so much more usable. I actually don't find myself running third that often. There's a lot of situations where I'm laying second pull all the way to the top of its rev range. If I take off an obstacle, then I'm actually double shifting and landing in fourth, and fourth has a great pull as well. Third just seems to overlap in a little bit of a weird situation. If I'm coming out of a corner where there's no obstacle to the next corner, yeah, I'll go through the gears and row them normal. But if there's obstacles involved, I definitely, whether it's on Excel or Decel, I find myself jumping up or down two gears at a time. Do I like the power range on this bike? Heck yes, it's way more usable in a lot of situations. It's a lot more fun to ride and gives a bike a lot more aggressive profile overall. As for the mapping options, this bike sticks with what Kawasaki has used the last couple of years. They have removable couplers. Green is your standard, white is your leaner slash more aggressive, and black is your fatter slash smoother map. Other changes include a small change on the frame. We have a little bit different front engine mount and top engine mount. They've changed the hydro forming on the frame instead of through bolts, we have studs, so they've changed those a little bit. But the big talking point, the handling package, is the suspension. It is switched from Showa's SFF spring fork, a single-sided spring system, to KYB's AOS spring fork, where we have two springs on each side, damping characteristic is handled on each side. This is the 25 millimeter damping rod version that's found in the newer Yamahas. And I think that's a huge improvement. I was really not a fan of the SFF spring. I actually preferred air forks over that spring fork because having that giant metal coil spring on one side create a lot of imbalance in the bike. And that's why I've really been dissatisfied with the Kawasaki the last couple of years is the balance of the motorcycle. If they were up a little high on the spring right on that SFF, it made it feel so topped out and so harsh on the front end. Last year they dropped the rate and it was way better initially, but it had no holdup. That fork just didn't have a wide operating range. This fork definitely winds that operating range, but I still found the balance isn't quite perfect this year. It's a little bit choppered out at my weight. I'm a little heavier than my standard 250 weight. I'm 160 right now. Target 250s are usually 150. Um, it's a little tall in the front end. It's a little bit top down. I feel a little bit crust initially. I slowed down the rebound to get it to settle a little bit more. But with more time with it, I've been playing with extending the forks out, which lengthens the wheelbase, but I'm taking weight off the front, making it feel stiffer. So I've been playing with making it softer and just trying to get the front end to settle a little bit more. It's a little high on the spring rate, in my opinion, with a 5.0 noon meter. That's the same as their 450. If you are 165, 170 to 180, probably the 170, 180 range, above more of that range of rider on this bike, you'll probably really like the stock fork springs and feel like the shock spring needs to go up a rate. But in my case, down more towards the target range, the rear shock spring rate is good. The fork just feels like it's maybe a little too topped out from spring pressure. The ergonomics on this bike are really interesting. I feel like the center of the bike to the seat profile is really good for a smaller rider because the base of the seat continues to shrink in until it gets to the top. It makes it really good for a smaller legged rider to bind their legs into to kind of grip in. The bike feels very skinny up top. But for a tall rider, you're definitely getting get your knees above that seat. They have the drop down peg option if that's the situation. But I also feel like the bar bend is really tall for those kind of smaller riders. I'm pretty upright position in the corners. And when I'm standing up, I'm a little farther upright than I'd like to be. I'd like a lower bar on this bike as an option if I'm in that smaller position. If I'm in the taller rider, I think the bar will be pretty good and you can drop down the pegs and work with that. As for the brakes, I like the front 270 millimeter rotor. 
very good feeling Nissan caliper. It's progressive, it has all the right action for me. I'm not a huge fan of the rear one this year. They upped the size from 240 to 250 millimeters like they did on last year's 450, and I said it last year and I'll say it again this year, it's too aggressive of a profile feel. I find myself locking the brake really easy, not having a lot of modulation feel. Um, on my personal 450, I dropped back down to 240 millimeter, and I know the race team does as well, and honestly that would be one of my first upgrades on this bike as well, because I feel like I end up dragging the brake into corners and standing up the bike a little bit too easily. Honestly, it was a little bit of a short day with the bike. We're gonna go back out with the Kawasaki guys in the next week or so to tweak on the bike a little more. There's some things in the balance I wanna play with a little more, lengthening the wheelbase a little bit and just trying to get the balance better because I'm really happy with the new motor package. I just wanna figure out the balance a little better because I think they made some really big improvements with this bike. Uh, it is available now if you want one. Shop Road Motorsports has them in stock. If you're looking for any parts and accessories, go to shopmoto.com, throw in the code ML512. They support everything on my channel podcast allow me to keep doing this and bring you guys more content and speaking of content make sure you hit subscribe we're just getting into this 2020 bike testing season we're getting closer to shootouts i'll be doing that with the 250s and the 450s more individuals tests um, look in the description below and just watch my channel for more videos on this bike uh, testing podcast i'm launching a few things like that as well